Hey guys, so today I am back with another Halloween makeup tutorial. This time around, it is Nagini inspired. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, so when I saw her character, I geeked out and immediately wanted to do something snake inspired. So if you guys want to find out how to achieve this look, then please continue watching. Before we jump onto the eyes, I'm using NYX First Base Primer Spray to have her face ready for later. Taking MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, I blend that all over my lid using a fluffy duo synthetic eye brush. This is going to ensure the longevity and opacity over eyeshadows. Afterwards, I set that base with Laura Messier's Translucent Powder on a really dense, wide eye brush from Real Techniques. This is optional, I like doing this because it makes the eyeshadows a lot easier to blend. And sometimes I'll apply it from the crease upward so that I can have some tackiness on the lid where I want the eyeshadows to really pop. Taking Oro, this stunning yellow gold shade from the Festival Eyeshadow Palette by Juvia's Place, on a fluffy crease brush, I will be blending that into the crease using windshield wiper motions. Take as much time as you'd like to have this perfectly blended for later. Now from Juvia's Place Zulu Palette on a MAC 217 brush, we will be blending this really warm, almost orangey chocolate brown shade on a MAC 217 brush from Juvia's Place Zulu Palette right into the outer V of the eye. Slowly blend that into the crease once you find that everything looks seamless on the lid. This is what it should look like so far. Taking Chocolat, a rich dark chocolate shade from the Deuce palette on a fluffy pointed crease brush, we will be blending that into the previous shade. So use a mixture of little circular motions as well as windshield wiper motions to get a really nice gradient. Remember to not be afraid to take your time blending. This is where it can make or break your look and we're not even halfway done with it yet. Taking Dark Matter, a jet black pigment by Star Crush Minerals on a smudger brush, I will be blending that out in the outer V as well. With black, you must work in layers and take your time. It can get muddy very quickly, so you don't want to pick up too much product. When you feel a little bit more comfortable, go ahead and blend that into the crease as well. Again, working very slowly and in layers so that it doesn't get too muddy. Taking Mali, a shimmery green shade from Juvia's Place Masquerade palette on a smaller fluffy brush, I will be blending that right onto the middle of the lid. This isn't so necessary since we'll be applying a glitter right on top of it, but just for the sake of blending, I added this extra step. Now using NYX glitter glue on my ring finger, I will be patting that onto the lid, making sure to get it all the way to right below the fold of my crease. Don't look up while doing this because it may transfer and glitter will be in places you don't want it to be. I'm taking this gorgeous loose glitter by Snazzy Cosmetics and I unfortunately don't know the name. It has this gorgeous reptilian red orange green duochrome finish. I didn't realize this while shooting but apparently the site and company disappeared entirely. I'm so sorry if I had found out sooner I wouldn't have used this glitter for the sook but I recommend NYX loose glitters as a dupe and hey they're the same price. You're more than likely to get fallout with glitter, which is totally fine. Just take a makeup wipe and remove that real quick. Taking this bright white shade from the Morphe 35B palette, I am going to be taking that on a tiny pointed fluffy brush and applying it right onto the brow bone. As I said before, I really like to pack it on and then blend it out. I just feel like it gives me the most payoff. Using Kiss Lashes in Daisy and Dual Lash Glue, I will be applying that onto the lash line right exactly on there so that it seems in perfectly with my natural lashes. So what I did with these lashes is extend the corners upwards instead of straight onto the lash line just to create a more upturned eye effect. I packed on some of that dark matter pigment that we previously used in the empty space between the lash and my lash line. Taking Clinique's Lash Power Flutter to Full Mascara, I will be brushing that onto my top lashes for now. I love this mascara because it makes it look super long and voluminous all at the same time. Adding mascara after applying your lashes will make sure that your natural lashes and the fake ones mesh together seamlessly. 
Now onto the face, I'm using MAC Strobe Cream, I apologize for the autofocusing of the lens. I'm going to be taking that on a dense flat brush and just applying that all over the face and I just love the glowy look that it gives me. Lancome Skin Feels Good for Foundation. This has become one of my favorites easily because it does not feel or look like foundation whatsoever. It genuinely feels like skin. And once you blend that in really, really nicely with that same brush, I just love the appearance that it gives me. Very natural, but at the same time gives me very light to medium coverage. Now I'm trying the infamous Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and i actually am a pretty big fan of it at first i thought it made my skin pretty dry but once i blended it all out as i'm going to show you in a little bit i actually kind of grew to love it so i kind of blended all of this out with a little fluffy crease brush it's okay to mix and match your brushes around to see what fits on your face and i'm just using circular motions to blend that all around my face i put it in the corners of my mouth around the nose under the eyes in between my brows and on my forehead of course on the chin as well now spraying some rose water on the real techniques massive beauty sponge i am blending that all out and this is just going to almost make everything melt onto my skin so that it looks like it's my skin and not actually makeup sitting right on top of it and it worked and that's how i ended up liking the concealer a lot more for under the eyes and places where they're a little bit smaller, I took a smaller Real Techniques beauty sponge. Take and Laura Mercier's translucent powder once again, and don't mind my nasty nails. I'm going to be packing that onto under the eyes, under the nose, you know, you get the gist of things. Pretty much everywhere where we had previously applied the concealer. So what I like to do is just pack it on onto my skin first and then swipe it all out. And then I took some rose water once again to make that melt into my skin. Now taking this e.l.f. face palette with this light bronzer, I'm going to be taking a fluffy crease brush and just blending that onto the lower lash line just to create a nice and easy transition. Taking Fulani, a chocolate shade from the Masquerade palette by Juvia's Place, on that same brush, I am blending it right above that bronzer, just making the two mesh together really well. And then once I'm more comfortable with how that's blended out, I'm taking Dark Matter once again and blending that right above all of that. But again, working in layers because black can get really messy very quickly. So once I get a little bit more comfortable with that, I drag it onto the top of the lid so that it creates this, again, like upward eye effect. Now using NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown, I will be lining the bottom of my brows first. Again, I will give you guys a detailed video very soon because I know you guys want to see that. And then I'll be lining the top part of my brow and then filling it in. And that's pretty much how I go from zero to a full-on bushy brow. And I love this brow pencil. It's only $10 and lasts a lifetime. Now taking that same bronzer from the e.l.f. face palette, I'm going to be using it on my face this time around, where it belongs. And I'm just going to blend that in with a pointed fluffy brush from Real Techniques. I love this face brush, it's so good. I believe it's called your contour brush. You know, that's a given. And I'm just going to be blending that bronzer right onto the cheekbones, around the nose, right on the sides of it, under my nose, around the temples. Yeah, pretty much anywhere that you would like to contour. Now taking that peachy blush from the same e.l.f. face palette, I will be applying that on a blush brush and just packing that on to the apples of my cheeks and blending it towards the back. Taking Urban Decay's Glide On Pencil in Zero, which is a jet black, I'm going to be tight lining my eyes as well as applying it onto the waterline. This is just going to darken things up and make it look a little bit more dramatic. 
taking summer from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Palette. I haven't used this in ages and I forgot how great of a highlighter it is. I'm applying that right on the tops of the cheekbones and this is just going to make our cheekbones pop out more. And I also like to apply it on the cupid's bow, tip of the nose, on the nose bridge, uh, and on the chin. And it just gives me an overall dewy look. Oh, and don't forget right above the brow as well. I also went ahead and blended some of that onto the brow bone as well as the tear ducts of my eye. Now mixing this light golden and warm chocolate shade together, I'm going to be packing that with a fishnet stocking right below the eye and then that's the shade that I created pretty much for the snake scales or skin and I'm going to be applying the fishnet <laughs> stocking right onto the face don't be afraid of this and just pack it onto the places where you see fit i personally put it on the side of my face on the sides of my neck around the temples pretty much anywhere that i felt needed a little bit more spiffing up i also put it right on top of the forehead just making sure to blend that all out at the same time we don't want it to be too harsh or we don't want a very stark contrast between our natural skin and the snake skin we want to make sure that we convince people that we are morphing into one i guess that's what you could say i kind of contoured with it as well i kind of like that feature i feel like it tied things together really well I also packed it on right next to the eyes so that it looks like the smoky eye is leading onto my temples Now taking MAC Pigment in Old Gold, this is one of my favorites and I haven't used it in a really long time. I'm going to be packing that in some of the scales in the same spots but pretty much just dispersing it all around so that it gives us a nice sheen every now and then when you turn your head. And I also brushed that like literally like I didn't even give a damn right on my neck. <laughs> Now taking Stila's Glitter Pigment, which I'm sure you've seen all over YouTube, and I'm pretty sure this is Kitten. I'm taking that into the inner corners of the eyes to make it pop a little bit more. I'm also smoking out that lower lash line with that warm chocolate Fulani shade from the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette. I just really wanted it to make it look deep set. I also wanted to blend the outer V onto the temples too to make everything mesh together. Taking Lime Crime's Lana Metallic Liquid Lipstick, it's this stunning copper lipstick and I'm going to be applying that all over the lips. I'm also going to be packing on the old gold shade right on top of that with the fishnet stockings to create like a scale look, or a, I keep saying scales but you guys know what I mean, a snake skin look on my lips. Taking some of that dark matter pigment, I'm making it more cat eye shape on the eyes and just extending that also to the temples as well to make it more B shaped. Now taking Max Vanilla Pigment on that same blush brush that we used earlier, I don't mind using the same brush over as you guys can see, I am brushing that right onto where your Adam's apple would be, just to highlight that a little bit. And taking a warm brown shimmer shade I'm going to be applying that onto the shoulders as well make it as light or dark as you want it to I personally did it very light now taking a black eyeshadow I'm going to start creating like the snake neck I was looking at a snake for reference you know the bottom part how they have these ridges so yeah I just created that all across the Adam's apple area this doesn't have to be so complicated or perfect and I also created some curved lines right outside the snake's neck just to let that flow a little bit better. Using old gold, once again, I'm applying that right in between the lines just for extra shade and color. And taking Fulani, that warm chocolate shade, I'm just using that for shadowing. And you can make this look any color you'd like. Nagini is very dark compared to this. So um, this, like I said, I'm just inspired by her. So if you guys want to make this darker or go exactly by her color scheme, go right ahead. Now what I did was I bought this fake snake from Hobby Lobby and took some gold foil and wrapped it around. And yeah, I just wanted to place that onto the neck and I did. This is a finished look and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see next and of course subscribe for more videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I love you all very, very much. Mwah.